Welcome to Presenting the King. I am so thrilled and excited to have my good friend, Pastor Joni Stevenson, with us today. She and her husband, Chaz, pastor Houston Faith Church, and it's an alive, revival, going church. I mean, they, they have the gifts of the Spirit all over everything, and the sheep are full of faith. So it's a wonderful thing to visit, and uh, you can watch their, their stuff by live stream. It's uh, HoustonFaithChurch.com. HoustonFaithChurch.com. But she is a prophet. She and I have traveled the, uh, the world together in uh, many countries, and we still like each other. It's amazing. I mean, Amen. <laughs> that's how you really get to know people that's right. is when you travel in other nations and that's when you right. do... 17 hour plane flights and That's oh right. my goodness it's just um and and not only that but she's she's an accountant and she she thinks in ways that I don't think which <laughs> is irritating sometimes but <laughs> we do get to we get everywhere on time it's That's it's, right. it's, it's fabulous and it's no thanks to me but uh, but anyway I love her so dearly and uh I have asked her if she would share um something that we need to hear in this hour, right. we are in such trying and challenging times, really unprecedented worldwide challenging times, and we need to hear what the Lord is saying. And so she's a prophet, and I want to hear what the Lord is saying in this hour. So uh, welcome, uh, Pastor Joni, and we're going to hear Thank you so her. much for having it's me. such a pleasure. Yeah, these are definitely interesting days, but you know what? Uh, these days didn't catch... God off guard. Right. Uh, these are not things that he's not aware of, things he's, he's not, not nervous. Nothing about God has changed. <laughs> nothing about Jesus has changed. That's Praise right. God. Nothing about the Holy yeah. Spirit has changed. Amen. Nothing about the kingdom has changed. Yeah. The kingdom is still alive. The kingdom is still well. You know, I remember one time years ago we were I was uh, actually at my home church and I was on the stage uh, and we were coming out of worship and just had a real powerful time in the Lord and the presence of the Lord came and and uh, I fell to my knees and had a, had a vision with the Lord. It was actually before the throne of God, about God making a place for us, that every believer has a place before the throne of God. Don't forget that. There is a place that you go. There's a place for you to stand before God where you can obtain the mercy and find the help that you need. Amen. Uh, but as I was coming out of, that, uh, out of that vision that day at church, I actually heard uh, with my spiritual ear God laugh. I actually heard him laugh. Woo! And I mean, it was a big, robust, full, he was laughing. And uh, as he was laughing, just what came to my heart was just that God has never moved. Uh, he's never been out of shape. Wouldn't we like to be able to say that about need us? need to remember that. He, he, he doesn't move. He's not moved. Nothing phases him. Nothing changes him. And, uh, you know, nothing catches him off guard. And in that moment, he was laughing. And, and then he said these words to me. He said, your uh, life is lighter than you're living it. Ooh, that's hey, Christian. so good. Hey, Christian, life is lighter than you're living it. Well, how is that? How is that? Is because we might be in this world, but we're not of this world. That's right. And we're not supposed to be uh, moved in all these things that are going on. The truth is, is we're going to have to put our attention. We're going to have to put our uh, 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 focus. We're going to have to put our affections upon Jesus so that we Amen. don't let our ears and our eyes and our heart get so full of other stuff. Because really right. what this whole life is about, and I'm going to say this, going to sound like a very simple thing but what what we need right now to live through this to get through this is we need to live full of god amen we need to live full of the holy amen. spirit uh, that that's the key you know i love it that joel had prophesied that there was going to be an outpouring of the spirit and then we saw you know it came the fullness of pentecost the holy spirit came down out of heaven in acts chapter 2 and i mean you know the bible says in that moment when the spirit of god came down out of heaven in the outpouring not just like a trickle, not just a little, but an outpouring, a real flood of God himself came into the earth through the Holy Spirit. It says they were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
And so that was the initial part yeah. of heaven in the earth exactly. for man, other than exactly. Jesus, because Jesus himself was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how he did it. Right. That's how he lived effectively in the earth, is he was filled with the Holy Spirit. But that was the initial moment. And so that's so powerful. Yes. I mean, that's the age we're living in today. Yep. The fullness of the Spirit. I mean, we're living in the, the outpouring, the signs, the wonders, right. the miracles, the Holy Spirit giving witness, you know, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit uh, being in our midst, moving, prophecies, dreams, visions. These are the days that we're living in. But, but there is a fight, in, a, in essence, to make sure we're not being moved and in the world and things of the world yeah. and we're living life in the spirit amen and so i just this morning or today i want to hopefully my job is to stir up your desire for more of god uh, listen we need more of him we, we need do. to be contending today we need to be contending. for the outpouring that's right i mean we need to be contending you know when they were in that upper room they were contending for what that's god right. had said was theirs that's they right. didn't even know what it was hadn't even come yet exactly. but they were contending they were praying they were waiting they were crying out you know they, they were giving it their all and today we need to be contenders that's right we need to contend for what god has said to us in this hour Come on, about our churches, about our ministries, about our families, about our life, our body, our everything that concerns us. God does have an intent in that, and he's, he's given a lot of it right here in his word. That's right. And so we have to be contending, and the only way that we're going to contend is we're going to have to contend with the help of the Absolutely. Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. The help of the Holy Spirit. You Listen. know, people are contending and involving themselves in watching all the circumstances that right. are so terrible. And they get involved in that and they get their eyes totally off of the Lord. Absolutely. Totally off of the Absolutely. Kingdom. Listen, and when we do that, we miss out on things. Yes, we do. You know, there was a time in the Old Testament where the Ark of the Covenant, which represented the presence of God, wasn't even in the city of God and they acted like they didn't care. Yeah. They just were, were going to go ahead and try doing church or doing his people thing without them. Well, it didn't work. And so we can't be like that today. We can't be out of position. And really, if we're going to live the Spirit-filled, full life, we're going to have to be hungry for God. That's right. We're going to have to be contending with our hunger, which means praying and fasting and, and believing uh, that what God has for us that we can actually have and wanting it bad enough to contend for it. Amen. Uh, I don't want to miss out on anything. Yep. Don't, you, you too, right? Oh, my God. I've, I've been that way all my life. I don't, I'm always, I don't want to sleep because I'm afraid something will happen. Right. I'm asleep. We don't want to miss out on anything of God. Yeah, we don't. You know, one morning uh, I woke up. This was while I was not traveling. I was at home. Uh, it was a Sunday morning. I was going to be in my church. And I woke up that morning straight out of bed with a word of the Lord for someone. Now, I didn't know the full word, but I knew, the, I knew, I knew you know, something came up. I knew the gist of what it was. And their face actually appeared to me that morning. I was so excited to get to church. I couldn't wait to release this life-changing. Listen, when God speaks to us, wow, when, when prophecy comes, wow, we're, we're edified, we're encouraged. Exactly. Wow, things change. I was so excited. Well, I got to church. I couldn't find him. Got up on the stage during worship looking around. Couldn't find him. Uh, got up in the middle of service. Things were going on. I was looking for him. Couldn't find him. He wasn't there. After church, I was asking people, have you seen so-and-so? I thought maybe he was serving somewhere or working. Didn't find him. Called him later that week. He had something to do. I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, why would you give me a word? And I know it was a powerful word. It wasn't just like God loves you, although that can be very powerful. <laughs> uh, and, and he said this to me. I said, you knew he wasn't going to be there. Why would you do that? But, I mean, I saw his face. I, I had a gist of... And the Lord said this to me. He said, I wanted you to know that people uh, can be out of position and miss them. And it taught me something. It taught me that our position with the Lord has to be that we're hungering after him, putting him first, seeking uh, the things of him. Do you know that the, the Lord never let me release that word to him? I was going to ask you that. He never did. He never did. And so I don't know, you know, but I, I know in that moment he missed something. And I don't want to be missing things today. And so what I know is that the things of God uh, come through the Holy Spirit. And so this is a time when we're going to have to have a vibrant, vibrant life with the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit really, He is everything uh, to us. 
Uh, Jesus knew that he was absolutely the one that we needed. If we're going to have a relationship with God, we're going to have to have a vibrant relationship with the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you know, you might skate by in life yeah. just not have, just having a so-so relationship with the Holy Spirit, but that's not going to ring heaven's bell. And I'm after ringing heaven's bell. Come on, I want that, you know, but yes, something spiritual, I something want of the, the kingdom. trumpets to blow. There you the go. Words to sing. Amen. I'm telling you. And the truth is, it's not going to satisfy our heart no, either. It's not. It's not. That's so why we're going to. So many unsatisfied Christians. That's true. Because we're not living in a life in the Holy Spirit, and so this life with the Holy Spirit, He is everything to us. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter uh, fourteen, verse seventeen, that says that. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. Uh, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the Bible tells us that kingdom life is in the Holy Spirit. Okay, So if we're going to live uh, kind of removed from the world and all these things of the world and all the things that are going on and, and be able to live a life with God, we're going to have to do it through the Holy Spirit. So we're going to have to know the Holy Spirit we're going to have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Actually, Jesus commanded us in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. We know that Paul prayed in Ephesians chapter 19 for every believer. It means if he prayed it, it's, it's, it's for us, every believer, that we would be filled with the fullness of God. And when he said that, he said the fullness of God. You know, in the Old Testament, because Jesus hadn't come, uh, because the Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out, uh, the full measure of the Spirit could not be in people and even couldn't come upon people. They could only have a measure of the Holy Spirit. Moses had a measure of the Holy Spirit. Elijah had a measure of the Holy Spirit. Elisha had a measure of the Holy Spirit, double portion of Elijah's measure. But listen, the Bible says in John chapter 3, when Jesus came, he came in the fullness of the Spirit. And then it says in John chapter 1 that we have received of his fullness. So we get to be filled with all the Woo! fullness of God. That's what powerful. a life. Listen, that changes everything. The Holy Spirit changes everything. everything. I grew up knowing God, got saved when I was young, uh, ba uh, baptized in water, you know, went to church, loved God. But when I got filled, I'm talking about, like the Bible said, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that was what happened. The Holy Spirit came. They spoke with tongues. When that happened for me, my life changed. My spiritual life changed. Yeah. Everything changed. Yeah. There, was a, there was that measure of the real fullness of God that came into my life and changed everything. And that is really what has anchored me today in being able to live and experience God like God wants yeah. every believer to yeah. be able to do. Every believer. Every believer needs to be filled full with the Holy Spirit. So I want to tell you about a vision that John G. Lake had. I believe it's very prevalent today. So he was walking uh, one night at night. He was going to go out and pray, and he entered into a park and was drawn to a great light. When he got to the light, he found out it was an angel of God. An angel, angels are real, still sent today, still speak today. And the angel had some messages for him about various places that he was ministering. Uh, John G. Lake had a question for the angel, and he asked the angel this. He said, what ideal should be held before the minds of men as the will of God. In other words, what is the main thing that should be held before men as the will of God? And he said this, he said that during that time I'd carried my Bible. He said the angel took my Bible, opened it up to the book of Acts, ran his finger down that second page, the portion where the Spirit of God came down out of heaven into the hearts of men, proceeding all through the book of Acts to its great revelations, its great phenomena. And the angel, speaking of God, said this. He said, this is Pentecost as God gave it through the heart of Jesus. He said, strive for this. Contend for this. Teach the people to pray for this. For this and this alone will meet the necessity of the human heart. And this alone will have the power to overcome the forces of darkness. So what I want you to know was that God was saying, what needs to be held before us? What needs to be kept before us as the main thing, especially in this hour when we're seeing so much just strife, fear, ungodly, uncertainty everywhere? What needs to be held before us is Pentecost, the fullness of the Spirit, the Spirit of God in our heart, 
That's what's going to meet the necessity of our heart. That's what's going to give us peace. That's what's going to give us life. That's what's going to give us joy. And only that alone is going to provide the power necessary to overcome the forces of darkness. Amen. I like that the Amen. angel said, contend. Yeah. I just, this morning, I just keep hearing it. Actually, last month, I think in my church, I had a word about contending. But again, this morning, I just keep, keep hearing that word. We must contend. Absolutely. We must contend Absolutely. as spirit-filled believers. Pray, 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 pray. And then pray as some more. never before. Right. Prayer. Prayer, like prayer, never prayer, before. Prayer. As never before, like never before. This is an hour when it is a necessity. To pray. Right. I, I've, I've never in my lifetime seen such a volume of prayer going forth all over the world. Right. But even yet, I have the same thing in my heart. The Lord's saying, pray. You must pray. You must pray more. You must pray more. Right. We, are contending we are contending for life as we know it in right. this nation right. and in this world. We are. Right. Time and the only, um, the only way we can do that is with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we have to know him. We have to be full of him. You know, when, when I received him uh, in that moment, my life changed. Mm -hmm. Things about me, things I had struggled with for many years, the deficiencies I had in myself were instantly in a moment changed. There was power in that moment. There's, there's a power of being filled with the yeah. Holy Spirit. And yeah. that's not a one-time event. No. We don't get filled and that's it. We're, we're to be being filled, as Ephesians chapter 5, 18 Absolutely. said. To be being filled so that we stay full of the Holy Spirit because it changes everything. And wasn't it Dwight L. Moody that said he kept praying to be filled with the Spirit and they said, we thought you already were? <laughs> and he said, yeah, but I leak. Yeah. I mean, you, we leak. Right. You know? And we so leak. we pray to be filled. More and more and more. Pray right. To be we're, you, we're, you know, we're using praise and worship. We're using prayer. We're using speaking in tongues, praying in tongues to yeah. keep ourselves stirred up. Yeah. I like to tell this story. When I was a young girl, my, my mother used to make me chocolate milk. She made the real deal. It was real, real white milk with powder in it. So she would stir it up and it would be wonderful. Yeah. But if I delayed and didn't get to the table on time, that powder, even though the powder was there, even though it had been applied, even though it had come in, even though it had been stirred up, it would begin to sink to the bottom. And when I would drink that milk, it would be like, Mama, this, don't, this isn't right. It would be like, this is dirty milk, not, not chocolate milk. Exactly. And I'd say, stir it up, Mama, stir it up. And I'd, she'd come with that spoon, and she'd begin to stir yeah. up that, and that chocolate that was down in there would be, begin to be stirred up and, right. and come back in. That's what it's like with the Holy Spirit. We That's receive good. Him. But we have to be stirred up, stirred, stirred up, yeah. stirred up. We have to keep the spirit active, yeah. alive, and, and so that we can contend for the things that are necessary in our life. The, the plans of God for your life, the purposes of God for your life. Listen, we are the body of Christ, yes, we and are. we all matter. We all have a part to play. Every believer accomplishing the will of God is important for the kingdom of God. And so this is an hour where we're going to have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Listen, when there, when we stir that up, when, when we experience him in that measure, I've been in meetings, you've been in meetings, we've been in meetings together, yeah. where when the Holy Spirit begins to get stirred up, begins to move, it's just wonderful. It is incredible. It is it's incredible. It's just incredible. I remember one time I was in a meeting and uh, we, we were in worship and I was uh, on the stage, partially preaching, and we were partially worshiping. And I just, in my spirit, heard the sound of rain. I heard the sound of rain, and, and the rain began to get very heavy, like what we would call in Texas, like a downpour. I mean, where yeah. it was just, and all of a sudden, I began to see rain begin to hit the floor and begin to fill the floor, and the level of that water began to rise. And as that water began to rise, the people were overcome. They were filled with that flooding of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you what, things just broke open. Yeah. I mean, God began to move. The Holy Spirit began to work. We had signs. We had wonders. We had miracles. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just a headache leaving. I'm talking about a, a lady that hadn't been able to have a baby for 12 years, been to every doctor, said impossible, just in one yeah. moment. Uh, pregnant within three months, have just miraculous thing. It comes from being filled Amen. with the Holy Amen. Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to read this. I want to read from the Amplified Bible a scripture and then just talk about this in a moment, uh, how being filled with the Holy Spirit 
is the, is the thing that's necessary for your life. Remember, the angel said, it's the only thing that's going to meet the necessity of your heart in this hour. It's the only thing that's going to give you the power to overcome everything that stands in opposition to you in this hour. It's a scripture in Ephesians 3.19 out of the Amplified, and it says this, that you may be filled through all your being unto all the fullness of God, having the richest measure of the divine presence, and become a body completely filled and flooded with God himself. Did you hear that? That's the intent of God for every believer. Listen, the world lives empty. The church lives full. Yeah. There's, no, there's no living and living empty for us. That's right. We're to live full. I'm talking about being flooded. You know when a river, a river's contained by banks, right? right. But when water comes and, and, and we begin to see a flooding, that water level rises. And what begins to happen is it begins to spill out over its banks. It begins to break its containment. It begins to, that water begins to come up and go into places it's never gone before. Go into higher places. Go further out. I'm talking about that's you. When you begin to get yourself stirred up in the Holy Spirit, when you begin every day to get that fresh infilling of the Lord and let yourself be flooded, what you're going to find is that you'll be the one that will be breaking out of your containments, breaking out of your restrictions, breaking out of the things that have tried to hold you back. It's that being filled and flooded with the Spirit that's going to take you into those things of your heart that you've desired, into the things that we want to see, the things that we want to know, going deeper in the Lord, going further. Listen, this if never ever, if never there never ever been a time more than this that's where right. we need more of God. Absolutely. None Absolutely. of us, none of us have arrived. Absolutely. There is more of God. There's more available. Mm-hmm. He wants you to have more. He wants you to experience more, but it's going to come through the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's going to come through us being filled and flooded. And listen, when, when a bank, when, that, when the river begins to rise and break over those banks, there's no stopping it. That's it. There's nothing that gets, I mean, you can, put, you can put sandbags in front of it. It's still going to go. It's still going to go. And that's what happens when we get full of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing that can stop us. There's nothing that can stop the plan of God for your life. Amen. There's nothing that can stop God's, God's will being accomplished. Amen. Signs and wonders and miracles being done for you and through you. So this is the, the time that we're going to have to be reminded of all of the stuff out there. We must daily take that time to stir ourselves up and keep ourselves full of the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself had to get full of the Holy Spirit. You see that at Luke chapter 3 and into verse Four, uh, chapter 4, it says that he got filled and then he began his ministry. Yeah. So what that tells me is that when Jesus got full of the Holy Spirit, he began to move in a, in a new dimension, exactly. in, in new operations. Yeah. I believe that there are, new, there are new works, there are new realms. Come on, there are new dimensions of God. There are new things that God needs you to get into that God needs you to experience, that God needs you to walk to walk in. And the way that we're going to do that is through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Amen. is our pattern. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is the representation of heaven, and he's the one who lives in us. So the fuller of him we are, the fuller of God we are. And really, that's what causes us to live under an open heaven. Absolutely. People are talking all the time about, you know, creating the open heaven. The open heaven comes from in me and in you with the Holy Spirit. The power of God. It the is Holy the power Spirit of God. Is the power of God. It is the power you're of God. Full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of power. Right? Full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of love. Full of the Holy Spirit, you're full of peace. There you go. Full of the Holy <laughs> Spirit, you're full of joy. Amen. And what comes from your joy? Strength. Exactly. Who needs some strength for this hour? Uh, yeah. Hello. Thank you very much. All of us. That's right. All of us. So we got to stay full of the Holy Spirit and realize that, listen, when that flooding takes, it doesn't, doesn't matter what's there. It'll affect houses. It'll affect restaurants, cars, whatever. When, when you get filled and flooded with the divine measure, the presence of God himself where it's overtaking you, nothing in your life is unaffected. Everything is affected. Your marriage is affected. Your finances are affected. Your soul is affected. Come on, you'll find peace in troubled times. Uh, everything, it just gets affected by us being full of the Holy Spirit. Listen, when we're full, we can deflect stuff. When we're full, there's not That's room it. for other stuff. That's it. We can deflect troubles and all That's this right. because we're just full of God. I don't have any room for that. I don't have any room for strife. I don't have any room for offense. Come on, church. 
We got to love God and we got to love each other. We got to be unified today. There's no room for all that other stuff. It's time to get full of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want you to know today is that this is available for every believer. All the time. Every day. Every day. Every day. All the time. That we can be filled. Absolutely. Full with God. Absolutely. Hallelujah. As bad as it may look. Yeah. As bad as you may feel. As bad as people tell you it is. I mean, all we hear right. Right. over the airwaves. Negative, negative, bad, 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 bad. All of that right. is outside the realm of God. That's the way the world is operating right now. That's the way the world is thinking. But we need to be filled and flooded with the power of God so that we can overcome the world. Because Amen. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Amen. So you and I, we have to overcome the world. So that's our prayer for you this yes. very day is right. that you be filled and flooded with God so that you can overcome the world. We can right. overcome right. all that stuff we heard last night. We can overcome all the stuff we've read in the newspaper in the last three weeks. Right. We can overcome all of the things that are happening in cities in the U.S., in cities all around the nation. We can overcome right. it right. because he is in us. He is in us. And listen, when Jesus was in the wilderness, so he got filled with the Holy Spirit, then he was led. If you want to be led by God, you need to be full of the Holy Spirit. He got in that wilderness, says he was tempted for 40 days, all that bad stuff, right, difficult. Right. But it says he came out full. There you go. So opposition doesn't have to deplete you. That's right. Don't let the, the child challenges and the trials and the stuff deplete you. Get full. Get, get tanked up every day. I mean, if you're going to run at full capacity, you're going to need to be full of him. And we do this by speaking in tongues and praying and worshiping and Absolutely. just in the word, just keeping God stirred up. But I just know so that God. Right now, yeah. we pray. Right now, the yeah. two of us, we agree. and We pray that you be filled with the Holy Spirit right yeah. this minute. You may never have invited the Holy Spirit into your heart, but right now we pray, yes. and you agree with us, and we pray that you be filled yes. with the Holy Spirit, that you be flooded right now. We send the power of yes. the Holy Spirit yes. over these airwaves right into your home, right into your car, right into wherever you are right this minute, right that you be filled and you flooded. be flooded yes. with the yes. Holy Spirit so flooded. that you can overcome all that is happening in this earth right this minute or in your life or in yes, your family. Yes. We love you with the love of the Lord, and we, we send we that do. love to you right now in the name of Jesus. And we say that there is nothing that is impossible with this yes. possible make miracle work of God. Pastor Joni, thank, thank you so much thank for, you for coming. Having it's been me. a pleasure. So bless you in the name of Jesus. Beautiful one, beautiful.